Okay, it's, Raleigh with Fish Keeping Jamaica asked me to record uh, my impressions on race and uh, geographic locations and for people who are in the fish hobby. And I think it's interesting for a couple of different reasons. Number one, I think that uh, the process, some cultures are really into keeping fish and most of those cultures have some sort of a water culture. Uh, the Asian folks who live on islands, or you know, Taiwan, Indonesia, huge fish keepers. The Philippines, Japan, huge fish keepers. China, which uh, many of its cultures, you know, people sometimes think that there's only uh, one ethnic group in China, but there's like dozens of them. And several of those cultures are water cultures. I, my background is I'm Scandinavian and German, um, and those are water cultures. I grew up in Minnesota where there's 10,000 lakes. Water cultures, being on the water, a fishing, being a part of fish is a real big deal. Um, there are some areas of the world and some areas of whichever country you may be in, unless you're in one of those you know, you're in Jamaica, which obviously is a water culture. Uh, Hawaii, obviously a water culture. Um, and I, for whatever reason in my head, I look at it as more like culture and experience over quote-unquote ethnicity. Is that people who gravitate towards fish tend to have an orientation as a water culture person. As a child, we spent all sorts of time on lakes, fishing and boating and water skiing. That's what we did in my family. So what does this mean for uh, people who are in, um, you know, in the process of how does this break down ethnically? I don't even think it matters. I, I think that it's, it's all about people who come from water cultures. And... Uh, and people who have that sort of background and orientation. And as fish keepers, um, we have commonalities. So my interest in fish keeping is whenever I meet someone who enjoys fish keeping like me, ethnicity doesn't matter. It's the commonalities that matter. And we as a world, we often separate things based on race, religion, age, uh, you know, whatever other psychographics uh, we collect in. We automatically bunch to people like us, whatever that is. In my thinking of this, is that I see commonalities. So, oh, you like guppies the way I like guppies? If you're a woman or you're Asian or you're African American or black, uh, African origin folks, or whether you're from Europe or from uh, Latin America, you're Hispanic, um, it means very little to me. Uh, what I like is collecting with people who have the fish interest that I do. Now, sometimes people will go out and say, well, you know, at least in the United States, because obviously this isn't the way it goes in Taiwan, and probably Hawaii either, uh, if you go to areas of the United States where there's a big Asian population, those fish clubs, there's a lot of Asian folks showing up to those fish clubs. So the, the process of having that water orientation um, it creates unique opportunities, uh, you know, to be into it. Now, what type of fish do people keep? That's the other thing. Um, I don't know. It's obvious that uh, Taiwan, huge into bettas and guppies. And, I, and I've not been to Taiwan, uh, but my guess is, is that 
there's not a lot of land on an island, so those are two fish that are easy to keep. Um, I've you know Indonesia easy to keep bettas and guppies. Obviously, the Chinese and goldfish and Japanese and goldfish, huge, huge historical part of their cultures. And the koi, the uh, different types of goldfish, uh, almost universally developed in Asia, which, uh, which is fantastic. And the beautiful varieties that have been bred for thousands of years. The Asians were sort of ahead of keeping fish, ahead of, I think, any other group as ornamental uh, pets well before any other uh, culture, at least from, from my understanding of reading of the history of this. So, why do people keep certain fish? I think it's depending, I, you know, I've had, I've had African cichlids, I've had South American cichlids, I've had Oscars, I've had a wide variety of fish. But I've always loved guppies. And, uh, and, I have found myself really digging into guppies and freshwater shrimp and corridoras and, uh, you know, I have super red and sisters plecos. Those are really, uh, I keep them because I like them, what I have right now. Would I like to do a bigger cichlid tank? You know, I'd love to have Zerawana. I would love to do an arowana tank, but, you know, I need like four or five hundred gallons before I can start thinking of that in an aquarium. I'm not there yet. I don't have it. Maybe, you know, maybe in the next year or two. You know, the other beautiful thing about our hobby is that we all look forward to things. You know, there's always that next step. There's always that breeding project. There's always... And the one thing I've learned, the more that we have to look forward to things the more uh, opportunity it is to enjoy life more. You know, I, I've sat there and watched members of my family, and I'm sure you have friends that I worked with, you know, who were older than me. And I saw those times happen where they stopped looking forward to tomorrow. The cool thing about the fish hobby is it always gives us something to look forward to for tomorrow. Because I'm never quite satisfied. I'm in the middle of projects that may be generations, maybe decades from finishing. Every time I have fry born, it's the most exciting thing in the world. So that's sort of uh, what goes in and my thoughts on it. Why do I keep the fish I do? Because I like them. Um, it's... Uh, And I like uh, and and I like people who keep the keep fish. And I wish I actually was in an area that had more folks who were Asian, because of their love of the hobby, um, being around more people who who dig the hobby. And uh, and I really appreciate that. I I appreciate any of the water cultures. And again, you know, our Aussie people. Those are water cultures. The Aussie people that are on uh, uh, on uh, on YouTube with their fish, it's pretty exciting. So that's it, Raleigh. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm Peter with Mob Guppy, and uh, and I appreciate appreciate fish keeping Jamaica. I appreciate anybody who's in the hobby who's trying to uh, reach a goal with their fish and enjoying uh, the hobby, and uh, and I appreciate you you know, subscribing to Fish Keeping Jamaica and seeing what Raleigh does because he has a lot of cool things going on. Again, thanks for watching and I really appreciate it.